Good afternoon. This is Jenna Ayole for Abolition News Network, December 15th, 1881. Today we are interviewing a man um, who's a minister of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Born a slave, worked in the underground, and before he was ordained as a minister, he was raised with the destiny to lead his people from the bondage to freedom, as did Moses in the Bible. Let us welcome Reverend Moses Dixon. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Reverend Dixon, I think I would like to start with your career. Um, when you were born, April 5th, 1824, to a slave mother, and your father was a slaveholder? Yes. My father had uh, 300 slaves, but coming from the church, he felt slavery was wrong. So he moved his slaves to Ohio, where he gave each slave family 300 I mean, 550 acres to cultivate. Oh, my mother, she named me Moses after Exodus in the Old Testament. She believed in the God's justice and felt I would lead our people out of bondage. Wow, that's quite a beginning. Now tell us how and when you got started. I recruited 11 men like the 12 apostles of Jesus. They had to be courageous, patient, and temperate to commence the great work of liberty. Named them the Knights of Liberty. That was in August 12, 1846. It was a secret society. They had to swear to an oath that I can die but I cannot reveal the name of any member of the organization. Wow. I'm proud to say that oath has never been broken. You see, assisting slaves to escape could bring death to someone immediately. Execution. So, a secret society, what can you tell us if anything, um, about what they did. We operated as an underground railroad. We, an individual or a family could be taken from one of our stations to uh, one of the western states or in Canada. Uh, the stations were 10 to 20 miles apart. Parts of our organization was even in some of the southern states. Really awesome. Then what did you do? Major attack on the South, in the in the hub of the South, and that was Atlanta, Georgia. Had a hundred and fifty thousand men ready to go, but I had to call it off because of the conflict in Kansas between the pro and anti uh, uh, slave settlers. You see. At the time, Kansas was uh, a hot point. That was probably in 1879, I believe. Uh, let me refer to my notes here. Uh, in 1856, 40, there was 47,240 of us, I'm proud to say. We transferred 69 slaves to, uh, to safety that spring. Wow, okay, so that so now that there was a war, um, was your job over? Oh, no, no, not by a long shot. When uh, Mr. Lincoln asked for colored volunteers, Knights of Liberty enrolled in the Union Army. I'm glad to say it was 147,200 knights enrolled that year. That is impressive. <laughs> so now we get to the point in history where the uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments freed the slaves, um, gave them full citizenship and the right to vote for men. So you accomplished a great deal, and all your work is done. <laughs> Not so fast. In 1879, settlers were massing there in great numbers. It was a big thing for the settlers in Kansas. 
Black, for a matter of fact, the black population in 1870 was 16,250. By 1880, the population grew up to 43,110. Quite a difference, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes. We processed 5,169 that spring, issued 50,050 rations, and issued out 13,500 pieces of clothing. They were called the Exodusters right here. That was from the book of Exodus in the Bible. I imagine, let me see, I took the note, we had 20,000 extra in 1879 moved into St. Louis from the underground or as refugees. And how are they going to get to Kansas? Or are we going to go up the Mississippi on steamboat for a $4 deck fare? Then on to St. Louis and then to Kansas by river. No other state. No other state would accept them. That's where I came in. I organized the Colored Refugee Relief Board. And we really did our job. And they realized that this wasn't just a small group of penniless mig people migrating, but Americans realizing for the first time that they can decide their future for themselves. Also, this gave it hope to many of those still, you may as well say in bondage, but even though slavery was over, but they were still held back, you know, in the plantations and so forth. Okay, and um, could you give us some numbers? 20,000 exoduses, I believe. That was 1879. Migrated into St. Louis, either by the underground or as refugees. Wow, you really did carry out an exodus for the exodusters. Yes. Um, did I miss anything? Yes, uh, my final contribution to the African-American community was when I uh, organized the, ma this manual, the uh, Knights of the, of the Twelve not, of the Knights and the Daughters of Tabor, a mutual aid society providing the ability for the black community to uh, support each other morally, financially, and spiritually. And also the order teaches the greatness and the goodness of God. This happens to be the manual in which I refer to, and I would love for you out there looking to look up this manual and see what our charter was all about. Thank you.